all your affliction momentary? Not only is all your affliction light in comparison to eternity and the glory there, but all of it is totally meaningful. Every millisecond of your pain from the fallen nature or fallen man, every millisecond of your misery in the path of obedience is producing a peculiar glory you will get because of that. I don't care if it was cancer or criticism. I don't care if it was slander or sickness. It wasn't meaningless. It's doing something. It's not meaningless. Of course you can't see what it's doing. Don't look to what you see. When your mom dies, when your kid dies, when you've got cancer at 40, when a car careens in the sidewalk and takes her out, don't say, it's meaningless. It's not. It's working for you an eternal weight of glory. Therefore, therefore, do not lose heart, but take these truths and day by day focus on them. Preach them to yourself every morning. Get alone with God and preach His Word into your mind until your heart sings with confidence that you are new and careful. You know, and, and, and we're like, why, why, why? But, but, but as this song said, and it, it just hit home. It was like, this is, it's doing something. When we, when we suffer for righteousness, and we, and we, and we, and we begin to to choose the side of righteousness. I, the Bible says that when we were, when we were. Aliens with God, we were we were slaves to, to unrighteousness. But now that we're with Christ, right, we're slaves to righteousness. And so what that happens is, is what that happens to look like is for me anyway, it, it wasn't automatic. It wasn't automatic. And even with Paul, even with Paul, Romans, Paul's an apostle, right? And he he begins to write a letter to the Romans, and in the twelfth chapter, chapter in verse two, it says, Listen, he says, do not be conformed to this world. He's literally talking to the church in Corinth. He's preaching to the church, the, the church in Romans, the Roman church. He's saying, listen, do not be conformed to this world. He says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? So, so why is he saying this? Because listen, literally, he's preaching to the to, to the to the choir. He's preaching to the to the um, to the church in Rome, and he's saying this. Verse 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to present yourself as a living sacrifice, which is your only reasonable response. And what I'm saying is like, Paul, this is Paul. And he's saying in the 12th chapter, not the first chapter, listen, he's going, he's writing chapter after chapter, and he comes to verse chapter 12, and this is what's coming to him through the Holy Spirit. He's saying, listen, in order to not be conformed to this world, you got to Submit yourself to God. You've got to present yourself as a living sacrifice. 
And in doing that, you cannot be conformed to this world. Then that's how being, you know, you can actually even be, be cognizant of it. You can be sober of it and say, hey, listen, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But without surrendering yourself, without, you know, presenting yourself as a living sacrifice, I believe you can't even see. You know, yes, we, we, we accepted Jesus Christ. Yes, we accepted. Right? We, we've accepted by faith what Jesus Christ did on the cross, and that's enough. How I many of you guys know that that's enough? But God doesn't want you to stay there. He wants us to, to keep moving on. Right? And we know this. So I want you guys to come with me to Romans. We're going to go to Romans chapter 5. We're going to start at verse uh, 1. Jesus. Yes, just say you got it. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Uh, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith unto his grace, into which we stand, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Somebody say tribulation. Knowing that the tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character hope. Verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint, but or it says, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And so so what is that saying? It's like, listen, through the through the tribulations, right? It begins to in our hearts, right, and in our minds, in our perspectives, it begins to produce the perseverance that's needed for this walk. For this life. Right? Jesus says, listen. He says, in this life you will have troubles. How many of you know that, that, that when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your bills didn't go away? Right? When you accepted Jesus Christ as your, your Lord, you're still dealing with the children. Still dealing with the kids, still dealing with our teenagers, right? We're still dealing with, with, with family. But the Lord, the Lord says this, He says, listen, the tribulation that you're going through is going to produce perseverance. It's going to produce, right? It says that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character. See, before Christ, we didn't have that. Right? We dealt with it other ways. Right? We dealt with it through drinking. We dealt with it through getting high. Right? When we get trouble, the path of this resistance is we get we tuck tail and run. Come back in three days. Serious. That's how we dealt with this situation. Right? This is how we deal with it. We can, you know, throw stuff, break stuff, get crazy, but guess what? The tribulation now in Christ, it produces character. See, see what we're going through in our walk that that, that we're walking towards Christ, right? We're, look at our end goal is Christ, right? We already received Jesus Christ by faith, right? We received what Jesus has done on the cross. He paid our, our penalty, right? He paid the debt that we owed, right? So we're, well, when, when, when the trumpet sounds, we're, we're going to be with Jesus. But, but what does that look like? What about now? What about in this life? What about... You know, the, 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 the suffering, the trials, just like in this, in this song, this is a song that, that, that we've been playing for, for a while, and it just touches and touches every single time. But what happens when that, that, that freak accident happens? Something happens. It's like, why? Why? See, I was thinking, I was thinking, and I was, I was, I was um, thinking about Ecclesiastes today. And, and, and King Solomon, he began to talk about his life. He had, 
so many horses, so many chariots. He had this and he had that. And then he would say, it's all vanity, it's all vanity, it's all vanity. And I'm like, it's not all vanity. So I begin to think about Ecclesiastes. It's like, what is that? What is this? What is this trying to say? Is, is, is it like a colloquial where, where he's saying something and it means something different? I begin to, I begin to, like, in my mind, I begin to think, and be like, why? Because I believe in the, in the Lord has a plan and a destiny for his people and his children, right? He says he has a plan, a, a, a plan and a purpose. Yeah. Does it all end when we die? I don't think so. Because God is a God of, of, of generation. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, what the Lord has prophesied over my parents is happening in our life. What the Lord is prophesying to, to us is happening in my grandchildren's life. Serious. If it was not so, then the Lord would be the God of Abraham. But he's not the God of Abraham. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? Exodus chapter 20, it says, I will bless you unto a thousand generations if you keep my word and keep my statutes. Right? God is a God of generations. God is a God of breakthrough, and guess what? If you deal with your giants today, if you deal with the trials and the tribulations today, your grandkids won't have to do that. Right? And so, so this is this is this is where we're at. So our mindset, we have to we we, we have to wrap our, our, our mind around it because in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says, and you will know that perfect will. Right? And so this, it, it's, it's all sequential. It's all a pattern that God is saying here. Notice this is Romans chapter 5. He's saying, listen, you have to understand that the trials and the tribulations that you're going through, if this, even if Romans is, is chronological, if, if the trials and the tribulations that you're going through is going to produce character, perseverance, then character, right? Then what? Patience. Right? It says, then, uh, and then it produces hope. So you're going to need that. That's going to be in your walk towards towards the end to, to when Christ, the coming of Christ. It's going to you're going to need to be developing your character to where all the way in Romans chapter 12 he begins to deal. He's like, listen, you're going to have to deal. With this. I believe that God speaks in, 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 in sequence, right? Yeah. And so what that looks like is God is saying, listen, you're going to have to understand that the trials and tribulations in your life. It's going to produce something, and it's going to make you the way that God is wanting you to be, right? It's going to, it's going to do something. It's going to produce something. But I like it because it's, it's Romans chapter 5, and then in Romans chapter 12, he begins to talk about renewing your mind. But you have to deal, because if, what, what happens if we come and the trials come, you know, and get it, you know, give your life to the Lord, you begin to surrender, and the trials come, and you turn around and you walk away. How can you even deal, right, with not being conformed to this world, being transformed if you can't even understand and you're not understanding the trials and the tribulations that are here? Or else he would have put Romans 12 at chapter 5 and chapter 5 at chapter, and in chapter uh, 12. Do you get what I'm saying? But I believe Paul is writing in the, through the revelation of Jesus Christ and he's saying, listen, I love it. Well, the girl back here, she's like, she wanted an impartation of her gifts, right? Romans chapter 1, it says, How I long to be with you that I may impart some spiritual gift. Sister, that's where it starts. Right? But then he says, Listen, you're going to have to go through some stuff. These trials and tribulations are going to fashion you, they're going to mold you into what God is going to produce in you. He's going to create a character in you. That you're going to be able to hold that anointing. Yeah. See, some things are taught, but there's other things that are caught. Yeah. Okay? But I'm going to tell you something that I learned a long time ago. Gifts. The gifts speak nothing of character. You say that again. The gifts. You can, you can prophesy the pain off the walls. You can heal the sick, raise the dead. But if your character is bad, it will show up. And I've seen it time and time and time. But listen, the way that Paul writes it, 
Chapter 1, he was parched again. Oh, then he begins to see the trials. The tribulations are going to be able to fashion you. They're going to be able to crush. They're going to be able to, 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 to begin to mold you. And then you're going to produce the character. Right? And then, and then sequentially, if we're following that, 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 this chapter, he's saying, hey, boom. Then you're going to be able to change their mindset. He says, then he says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. But to me, what this is saying is, is you're going to have to go through some trials and tribulations. Sure, you can get the impartation. Sure, you can, you can have the anointing, the charisma. But it's going to take fashion to receive. And then guess what? So you're going to have to deal with your mindset. You're going to have to deal with Right? And get character in order to receive. Right? And I see that. And I, and I love that. But what that's going to do is going to produce character. And then what? Then it's going to produce hope. In Him. Right? We were saying earlier, those that, must, those that come to Him, to God, must believe that He is. And that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. See, some of you guys have been around long enough where I say, you'll hear me say that God is learning you. He's learning you. You're not... What do you mean? He's learning you. He's teaching you who he is. As a baby Christian, you'll see more signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Why? Because he wants you to see. He wants you to see. He wants you to know. You want to get healed? You get a little baby to pray for you. Mm-hmm. It'll happen. We'll pray. You know, those of us that, that, that have the faith will pray and they'll get healed. But what I'm saying, the baby, that childlike faith. He wants us to come as children, right? But then, like, we'll look at our little grandson. Lay hands and then come to lay hands. Literally get healed. Seriously. But that, this is what it is. But God, even now, each one of us are in different stages. He's learning us. Right? He's showing us. Week by week, he's like, wow. But he's showing me. I'm like, Lord, wow. He odds me every time, every time, every week. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know what this, this this is what we're talking about. Like, do you know that 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 familiarity breeds contempt? But I believe that 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 the angels in heaven they're they're worshiping and saying holy, 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 because every time they cry holy, they're seeing another facet of God. They're seeing another hue, another dimension of God's awesomeness, right? Of God's holiness, of God's mercy. You know, of God's favor, God's love. Right? And so, how many of you know that the kingdom is upside down? Yeah. The kingdom of God is upside down. Oh my God. We're saying that the trials and the tribulations, the hurts and the pains and the sicknesses and the diseases are for my favor. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, don't say that. I have to say that. It's in the Bible. Let's go to First Corinthians. Uh, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter one. Jesus. I'm gonna start at uh, uh, verse. Uh, let's go to three. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in, and who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. Come on. I like that, by the way. That's just the beginning. You know? With, with the comfort with which our, we ourselves are comforted by God. Right? So, so the suffering that the, the Lord is comfort, comforting us, but it's not for us. How many of you guys gone through something and, and, and you know, you're like, man, it's horrible. But two weeks later, three weeks later, it was for that. It was for that situation. You know, this, this, is, this is huge. Right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that one again because I like that one. It says, who comforts us in our tribulations that we may be able to comfort those 
who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for the enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or, if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Verse 7 says, And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are, part are partakers of the suffering, so also you will partake of the consolation. And so, until now, I've been talking about the sufferings, but there's a reason, right? There's a, there's a rhyme and a reason. The Lord is saying, listen, you're suffering. That, that you may help console Right? That you can help console others that are suffering. And so, but but it was because you were comforted by God. And what that's saying is, listen, in your time, in your darkest time, when you were crying out to God and, and nobody knew, nobody was there, you were there all alone at 12 o'clock at night, you were calling upon the Lord and He came. Yeah. Comforted. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm, I'm certain that, that when you die, it's not the end. Why? Because listen, because when you are comforted, you release that, right? You, it keeps on going. The world says pray, pay it forward. But I'm saying, listen, when you when you go through sufferings, and guess what? Then you can console because the Lord God Himself consoled you. He comforted you. You can comfort others. Yes. Right? Yes. Trying to, I'm trying to lay that down because where I'm going is serious. Verse 8. It says, for we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, in our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in our in, in ourselves. I want to say a lot right there. This is Paul. He's talking about what he was going through. He's listen. I don't want you to be. I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to know this. That the sufferings that I had were the worst of the worst. I mean, says that we were burning beyond measure, above the strength, right, that we had, so that we despised even life. Verse 9, he says, here I'm doing 9 again. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, here we go, who raises the dead. Mm. Have you ever felt the pains of death? Have you ever felt so bad that you were have, you are throwing in the towel? Come on, come on. That's what Paul's saying right here. He's saying, man, it was like it was so bad. It was more bigger than our strength. We can't even handle it. It was like we were done. If the Lord didn't show up, I was gone. But then he begins to, to, to bring some revelation into that way. He says, I had to go there. Why? I had to get, right, so close to death. I had to give up even in my own strength and give up my life. He was like, man, I, like, I don't want you to be ignorant. He's like, man, it was crazy. He's like, my lungs were shut down. My kidneys were shut down. My pancreas was shut down. Preach. <laughs> like, what? See, some of us are going through things. We're going through, 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 through sicknesses and going through disease. And we're, we're like, oh, what are we doing? What's happening, God? Are we thinking like there's no victory? But God is the God who raises the dead. I love, I love, young bro, he says, the death of a Christian is a beautiful thing. Yes. I don't even know what song that is, but I remember that to this day. Yes. Why? Because guess what? When a Christian dies, then God can move in and he can raise the dead. Yes. Then you can operate in the resurrection power that God, Jesus himself, operated in. Why? He said, Jesus said, this, it's better that I go. You see, we're thinking here, it's like, Jesus is like, man, it's better than I go because guess what happens? When I die and I'm resurrected, that power is released. Yeah. Right? And so this is, this is what we're coming into. 
The Bible says, unless a seed falls down to the ground and dies, it will not produce fruit. What is he saying? That the sufferings and the crushing, the sicknesses, the diseases, the divorces, the, 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 the crushing produces death. That the power of the resurrection, Christ, that was it, Christ that raised from the dead, can come in and move in your life. Why is that so important? Because, listen, what's happening is, listen, there's, we have a powerless church because all the church is alive. There we go. You want to know the problem with the church? You want to know the problem with the, with the, with the mainstream churches? They're all alive. They all got opinions. They all got rights. Right? We were born with an inalienable rights. This is, you don't have a right to do this. I have a right to do that. Yeah. Okay. Do it. But when you see somebody that's dead and hidden in Christ, they operate in power. They're operating the resurrection power. They're operating in signs and wonders because he says, listen, uh, 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 Mark chapter 16, verse 17, he says, these signs will follow those who believe. Right? Not just to believe in, the, in, 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 in laying hands on the sick and they'll recover. They believe that Jesus Christ came. He was crucified, he was buried, and he, res- he rose again. See, there's factions in the church that believe there's no resurrection. But if there's no resurrection, if Christ wasn't raised, then we're not raised from the dead. So we're living, we're living, we're, we're living our best life in us. See, now we're, we're, we're doing our own thing. Right? This is, this is what it is, but what is it taking? We have got to go through the crushing. We've got to go through the pressing. Right? Because listen, wine is not grapes. It's made from grapes, but it takes a crushing. It takes the crushing of the grapes that produces the wine. Just like the olive, the olive's got to go through the press. But when the press, when they, when they get crushed, it produces the oil. I'm going to tell you, man of God, I'm going to tell you, woman of God, through that crushing produces the character. Right? You want to be the character of, uh, uh, of Christ? Right? We want the mind of Christ. We want the character of Christ. Well, you have to, you have, you have to partake in his sufferings. You know what I mean? It's like, man, it's the crushing. It's the betrayal. It's the backstabbing. It's the... It's, it's the it's the, the being cheated. It's the being left out. You know what I mean? It's it's the it's the dying itself. But what that looks like, it makes room. How I many you know that 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 it makes room in our weakness? He is made strong. It makes room for Christ. It makes room for the power of his resurrection. The resurrection power in, in, in your life. See, and that's just the beginning. Right? Amen. What that looks like is, is do you have the character to carry that? I guess that's the question. Right? Because if not, then it goes boom, then you got pride. So when the pride comes in, that's where the that's where the, the spiritual and, the, and the, the, the spiritual pride and the religion comes in and I did this and I did that and I did this and I did that. But it wasn't you. Christ. Right? Let's go to let's go to James. We we'll go to James chapter one. Hallelujah. I'm going to start at uh, verse 2. Ready? Yeah. Is my title says, my, my Bible title, it says, Profiting from Trials. It says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. It says, but let patience have its perfect work, 
that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Verse 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives it to, uh, to all liberally and without repro reproach, and it will be given to him. Right? It's available. It's available. It says, any of you guys lack? It's available. It says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways. This is important. Why, why, does, why, you know, why does James put that scripture connected with the various trials? Why? Because first he opens up and he says, my brother, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces but let patience have its perfect work, and that you will be perfect and complete, lacking none. Right? That this is not even a different paragraph. It's the same. It's the same sentence after. He says, "If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask liberally." Or, or he says, "He says, let him let him ask God, and, and the God uh, who, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, reproach, and it will be given to him." What, I, what I'm saying is, listen. He literally ties wisdom with trial. Here we go. See, some of you guys are, are going through these trials you don't understand. You feel like the, your, your blood pressure is high. And it's coming, right? And it's like, oh my God, here it comes again. It's producing love. Producing, it's producing that patience. Right? But, but he's equating this patience. He's, he's equating this with wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> Any of you guys ever pray for patience? Uh, yeah. <laughs> is that then and now? Oh, no. Right? Because the God, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of of you, you, your generation. Your, and so what happens when you ask God for patience? You're like, all right, because the word of God says, listen, if any of you lacks wisdom, see, he equates, it, he equates patience with wisdom. If any of you guys lacks wisdom, ask for the God who, who gives it, and guess what? He's going to give it to a little one. I mean, he's going to give it all. But it backs up, so you ask for patience, and he's like, okay, I'll give it to you, but then it pushes you back. You know what I mean? Or, or how? Like, how do I count it all joy when, when I see this and, the, and, 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 you know what I mean? And the water's rising and coming around. But the Bible says, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, yes. God raises the standard. Right? That's so what I'm saying. This, this is God. And it's infinite wisdom. When, when in his ways that are higher than our ways, he's like, what? He's like, in order to go up, you got to go down. You know, this is this is what I that makes sense. If you want to be first, you gotta be last. Literally. Jesus says this is not the one that sits at the table greater than he who serves? He says, it's not so in the kingdom. So what do we what do we do, Lord? <laughs> you got Starbucks card if you have to that one, right? <laughs> it's like, die! It's like, what? Die! Because if you die, when you die, there's a resurrection power. That same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead will come to you. Amen. You're like, dang! I don't want to die! But that's what it is. It says, why is the path? destruction. But narrow is the way. If you find it. See, narrow in the Greek means to crush you. Narrow means to, to go like, you know what, you gotta, you know, the way that I see it is like you're walking through and the, the walls are closing in and you gotta 
take off your jacket. You gotta take off. Throw that backpack down. Throw that purse. Throw that extra baggage from the past. All that pain, all that shame, all that rejection can't go with you to the next season. Right? So you gotta go and you're trying to slip through. Some of us need butter. Well, like, kind of. Right? But you gotta have to release everything. Right? Because guess what's happened? Narrow is the way. If you find it. And so why am I saying this? Because guess what? This is what the Lord is saying. Count it all joy. Did you go through various trials? Think of Peter. He says, look at Don't think it's strange that this is happening to you. It's supposed to happen. So that's where it is. There is no message. What is like, where is the message? What is, what is the punchline? That's the punchline. Don't think it's strange that you're, you're going through this. Because it's producing what God wants to produce. And in order to produce what ultimately is going to produce death in your life. And once you die, then the resurrection power can come in and move. And you're going to be able to console. You're going to be able to comfort. You're going to be able to love the unlovable. You're going to be able to say, hey, happen. You're going to be able to look at the homosexual and say, what happened? You're going to be able to look at the drug addict and be like, what happened? What are, you, what are we doing? Let's do this. Why am I saying that? Because that's the love of God. Because Jesus, he went through the suffering. The Bible says that Jesus, through his sufferings, he learned obedience. And I'm going to say that. For in Christ, through sufferings, we're going to learn obedience. One of the best scriptures, and I don't have a scripture, something that hit me hard. It says that a blow that hurts will bring forth fruit. You can keep playing around, keep playing around, getting your hands smacked. You know what I mean? The judge hits it. Bam, slaps you on the hand. Dad says, oh, I'm going to whip you. You do it again. It's like the 39 times. But then you go and you reach and you burn your hand and you're like, I bet you won't do it again. But why? It took, it took a, a, a sharp reprimand. That's what a rebuke is. It's like a bam. It's a sharp reprimand. And that's some of that what happens, needs to happen. Some of you guys need to lose some stuff. Mm. Like, oh. Some of you guys need to go through, 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 through a loss of job. Or whatever it would be. Right? To, in order to produce and to, to understand, like, hey, I better be on time. Right? Some of us would just take it on for granted. Mm -hmm. I would take the mercy of God for granted. Yeah. But guess what? It's going to produce that perfect. It's going to produce character. In Romans chapter 5, it says, it's going to Your character is going to. You're like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. James is what? It's going to produce that perfect peace. That, 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 that patience, sorry. Not the peace, but the patience. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man. I bet you won't do it again. You guys with me? So some of us are going through trials. Various trials. Some of you guys are, 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 are just stepping right into it. Some of you guys are just coming out of it. Or some of you guys are smack dab right in the middle of it. But I want to encourage you. I feel like the Lord was, was speaking this at this it's not all for none. For a reason. But it's to produce that character. It's to produce that patience. It's to produce. Ultimately, it's for to produce you to, to go low so that God can go high. John the Baptist, listen, he was a heathen wilderness. He ate grasshoppers, hung, I mean, locusts. I mean, that's what he was like. That's what he was fashioned to. And you know what his response? When the people when the people came to him, it's like the guy that you were with yesterday. We're talking about Jesus. He's baptizing. John the Baptist tells them, listen, nothing will be given unless it's from the Lord. And he says, listen, he says, I must decrease so that he may increase. But but that was fashion to him. He is literally living in the wilderness. I mean, he was camel hair, eating grasshoppers.
offers all the things for him. That produced his, his status. He was humble, right? He, there was humility towards Christ when he said, listen, they're like, listen, the guy that you were with yesterday, he's baptizing. You're supposed to be baptizing. He's like, I'm a, I must decrease that he may increase. But you know what Jesus said about John? That there, is, there is not a prophet like that. There was never a prophet. Someone like that. This, what, what's coming to my mind is like, like there, there, there was never a prophet like to this time like him and there never will be. But what? Because listen, in the natural he had no status. He had camel hair. He had a belt. He was eating grasshoppers, locusts, honey. But in the spirit realm he had status. He was recognized by Christ. There hadn't been a prophet like that before, and there's not going to be one after him like that. Why? Because he went down. He went low. He died to self. He died to his, his affections. He died to his opinions. He died to everything. But he was, but he was given, even in the spirit realm, his status was in the real. Can you imagine? The Lord saying there's been, there hasn't been a prophet among us. There hasn't been a prophet like that till now, and there won't be a prophet out there. You can buy that. You can't buy status. You got I mean that doesn't make you know what I mean? That doesn't make. But but to me, and this is just coming, this is this is what the Lord has shown me. He's like, look at Because he went low, he went high. You want to be first, you gotta be last. Want to live, you gotta die. So, I want you guys to take that word. Hallelujah. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord God, that you would fill this word in every heart, even our mind, Lord God, that you would, Father God, cancel the assignment, Father God, that would try to pick that word, every bird, every spirit that would try to retract that word right now, Lord, I ask that you would, Father God, Surrounded, that you would seal it, that you would cover it with your blood, Lord God, and that there would be much fruit. Father God, that we would take that, Father God, and that we would run with it. Father God, that we would take that, Father God, and live with it. That we would take that, Lord God, and that we, Father God, would be established. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap. Yeah. The Lord gets all the glory, all the honor. Hallelujah. We are uh, mm, we are moving into some amazing times. We literally are, and I'm excited to see what God is going to do. So, until next time, we will see you guys. Right? Um, Sunday. See you Sunday. Love you guys. <laughs>